Hey, hello everyone, Pally Tim here. Welcome back to the A through Z playthrough. In today's video, we're taking a look at Zul Jim. I'm just gonna say it again. This is not the last episode. We still have to go back and revisit Gaul. But what a long road it's been, dudes. We made it to the end. Zul'jin was added into the game on January 4th, 2017. I've always loved his style. My main in World of Warcraft for years and years and years was a troll shaman. So the troll static has always really done it for me. When he came out, he was pretty good, especially at dealing auto attack damage. Actually, I believe when he first released the axe build, the Q build was the most popular way to play him. Things have shifted around a little bit. He had a very narrow focus when he was first released, so they actually reworked him that same year. On October 17th, 2017, we see the addition of his baseline quest where he just has to auto attack enemies. We see the addition of things to support the guillotine where you throw this ax and it does more damage based on the health that you're missing. Unfortunately, I can't show you it right now, but Amani Rage used to be a level four talent. You actually just start the game with it now. The thing that lets you lower your HP, but then rapidly heal it back, that kind of stuff was added to make the guillotine a bit more effective. It's been about a year and a half since this character was patched, but one of the things they added in was a addition to recklessness. They did make the attack bonus a little bit less, but it added additional functionality so you can actually stack up your character quest much faster. And since then, this has become the most popular talent in the tier and uh, really helps define the Tazdingo playstyle these days, I think. I tried a few different builds with him, and this one felt the strongest to me for sure. He has a win rate right now of 51.34%, a popularity of 18%, and a ban rate of 4.46. So it seems like he's sitting in a pretty good spot. I have not played Dingo in a long time, and it took me quite a while to shake off the rust, but I think I have a pretty good video for you guys today, and I hope you enjoy it. If you do, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button don't forget, we have one more video to go. The series isn't over, but it'll be a little bit before that video is released because I'm on vacation. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on the Dragonshire map today. The friendly team, Zul'jin, Hanzo, what the heck? Valera, Taronda, the enemy team, the Butcher, Thrall, Hogger, Nova, and Malfurion. At level one, we're going to go for Recklessness. While Zul'jin is below 75% health, he gains 10% spell power. While he's below 50% health, his basic attack damage is increased by 15%. And his basic attacks against heroes grant additional stacks of who of you want to axe, not who want to axe. You want to axe is our baseline quest. All we have to do for this bad boy is auto attack heroes. The more we do it, the more benefits we get. Once we're halfway done with the quest, it's going to increase our attack range by a pretty substantial amount. And then once we are fully finished with the quest, it's also going to make it so our W ability rotates around multiple times. Good grab from our Dahaka, ensuring that we get a kill on Malfury in there. Now, unfortunately, I do have to play kind of far forward if I want to get stacks. And I mean, I can't just get stacks off of the Nova decoys. That is certainly a possibility. But it's very important that I'm always hitting something, especially in the early game, which is why I feel very blessed that I have a Taronda on our team helping keep us alive. I'll try to return the favor and keep her alive as well. We see Malfurion going for some roots to try to stop us in our tracks, but no, we dodge around them no problem. We also see the Butcher starting to reemerge. Now, I am using my trait. It gives us increased attack speed, but then every time I land an attack, it's also siphoning a little bit of my HP. Luckily for us, our E ability helps alleviate some of that concern. We can simply channel for a few moments and then regenerate a substantial amount of our HP. Uh, let's see if I, there we go, decent damage. Butcher going in on our Taronda as well. We're going to hit him hard. We're going to hit him hard. Here we go. 
just literally funneling auto attacks into him. He may have gotten a little bit of meat there, but I don't think that it was worth it. A little bit more damage onto the enemy team's Malfurion, and we secure a couple kills in the mid lane. Now, the objective is active, but I've been so focused in on my quest that I haven't been paying any attention to it, just attacking every opportunity I can. Looks like Valera's grabbing top right now. If Dahaka can grab bottom, I could jump in the Dragon Knight pretty quickly and be on my way. Looks like Thrall is rotating down. He had enough of the top lane, and I don't mind. We got a good couple auto attacks in there. Switch are engaging on Dahaka down in the bottom lane. Hogger right up against the wall here. Um... I'm going to get Voodoo Shuffle, because Voodoo Shuffle allows me to get out of Roots, which is, uh, you know, Malfurion's thing. I think the most popular choice here is Amani Hide, but that is not what we are going for. Now, this does not get me out of any Butcher stuff that he might intend to do, but if we do see these Roots, we should be able to move right through them, I think. I think so, anyway. Three members of the enemy team still down here in the bottom lane. We just got a little bit of vision of the Butcher as well. Dahaka moving in to try to set up some plays. And we see a really good stun on the Butcher there. As these guys are running away, I'm just going to channel the objective. It should be available for the team in the middle lane if they want to go grab it. Hogger looking like he wants to move back onto the capture point. That's fine with me. A few more auto attacks, and we're going to be in a great spot with the Butcher charging in one more time. I was ready to switch targets, but he's actually pushed out of here pretty quickly. So the first stage of our quest is done. We are attacking at a bit further of a range. This is really nice to play this character with a normal team comp. I've been in nothing but assassin games all day trying to learn how to play Dingo, and it's um, it's definitely been an experience, I could say that. Uh, the enemy team is moving back in on the objective, and there's not too much we can do about it. Once Dehaka starts to re-emerge, we might be able to go back in. Let's pick up Ferocity. It's going to give us even more attack speed while we're low on health and allow us to rip apart Hogger, who overstayed his welcome in the bottom lane. Increase the attack speed bonus of Berserk by 40%. That is substantial. Look at that damage there, boys. Ooh, didn't turn my shuffle on in time. That was my own fault. Should not have died there. That was complete user error. Although a good grab from our Dahaka removes that meat from the Butcher again. He's only sitting at 29 stacks right now. That is pretty nice. That is pretty nice. So Berserker, activate to increase basic attack damage by 25%, but consume 2% of your maximum health every attack. Um, we attack 1% faster for every 1% of health that we are missing as well. Which is why the most popular talent choice at level 10 is so iconic. Taz Dingo allows us to continue fighting when most other characters would simply be dead. It stops us from dying for a duration. So if we get our health really low and we can unload into a target by flinging axes at him, it can be really really beneficial. Hogger taking some big chunks as he tries to get out of here. Good grab onto the Butcher. I'm kind of in a bad charge spot, so we're just going to relocate and just funnel that auto attack damage in there. Bro, he didn't stand a chance. He would have had to really try to stun me quite hard or something. Uh, Thrall has retaken the top lane for his people, but we can retake the bottom. <gasps> no one stayed middle, and the first objective goes to the enemy team. Wow, I didn't expect that. I did not expect that. That dragon can channel a kick into me. It looks like it opted not to. Hey, this is fine for me. I'm going to get so many stacks here just auto-attacking the dragon knight. We're about to start eating this thing for lunch, bro. Uh, Hogger overstaying his welcome again, but... Oh, there we go. Beautiful setup by our Dahaka yet again. He's coming in really clutch with these grabs. That's really nice. We're going to grab Dingo at level 10. Once again, we hit this button and we do not die. I swear, every game I've had on this character practicing, there's been a Valera on the enemy team who is like, you know what? I don't think I want to let you play your character and just silences me constantly. We're going to take some cover behind the building and use our channel. The other half of Voodoo Shuffle is that it lowers... Nice kill by Hanzo. Wow, very nice kill by Hanzo. It lowers the cooldown of our E by 40%. Now, that's not in bold when you're hovering over this. I really feel like it should be. 
I really feel like that's an important part of the ability. But hey, uh, I'm not a developer. What do I know? Rotating back down to the middle lane, the Butcher sitting at 27 stacks right now at almost the seven minute mark. That is beautiful. That's exactly where we want him to be. Friendly team grabbing a mercenary camp. That'll start pushing the bottom lane. Enemy team likely doing the same thing. I'm not too sure, but our quest is nearly done. We're at a hundred. No, we, we are done. Excuse me. We've gone over our quest. So what happens? Does this just keep stacking? Uh, I'm here to be an imposing presence for Hogger. That's all I needed to do. Just walk up and throw some abilities around to look intimidating. Although he is starting to move back in. We don't see the Butcher, so moving up there would be pretty risky for me. And look who just showed up moments later. The Butcher. So now our W ability spins twice, doubling its effectiveness, even without us going for that talent build. We don't even have to worry about that. Um... The enemy team is still pretty heavily enforcing the bottom lane. This should be a good axe throw. We should note that that axe throw also allows us to get a lot of really good siege damage in as well. Um, they're grouping up quite nicely too. Look at that. It's just free. It's just free. Hogger going after Valera, trying to find her inside of the objective pit. Doesn't quite connect. Thrall might be moving straight for me. We got a couple good auto attacks in on Malfurion, who's trying to hold that side of the objective. Four members of the enemy team now down here in the bottom lane. We have bonus damage on Thrall, and I'm just going to unload into Hogger while I can. We're also going to take Eye of Zul'jin, which is going to give us some movement speed every time we attack. Beautiful pick up there. Now looking at the Butcher. We are shredding him. Oh, but I got a little too close. And I didn't know Hogger was in there. I saw Furion, and I was really pushing it for just Malfurion being there, too. But I didn't see Hogger emerging from that bush in time. So I could have fallen back and healed in that situation. I could have popped Dingo in that situation. That was the time I should have used Dingo, where I know I'm pushing in at low health into a very hostile area. Now, I will say... Dingo's never been my forte. I feel like I understand how to play him, very similar to Phoenix. You know, you switch your auto attack, you hit stuff on Dingo, you get your health low and then try to hover at low health. In practice though, it is a lot more challenging than it is in my head. So uh, that's, that's why things don't always go quite as planned. Uh, Hanzo is up top and I think he's alone up there. I'm gonna hang out with Tazdingo or uh, with Dahaka. One thing we can do as well is actually use Amani Rage at some point at the start of a conflict. And what that does is it lowers our HP down to half, but then over time we actually start to heal that HP back. So you're basically, let me shuffle on out of that. You're basically setting yourself up for big damage, but also kind of controlling your health because the health that you lose is going to be coming back. Great Sunder by the enemy team's thrall stops us from advancing. The Haka ready to move in again in a moment's notice, though. Look at that. He is on top of things. Uh, let's just get some axes cleaving in this choke here. Really makes me wish I was going axe build, but a little too late for that. Good damage on Thrall, and he gets grabbed at the right moment. Not able to run away from that, and a good use. Ooh, great Hanzo stun. If I was paying more attention, I could have gone back in on that. Everyone on the friendly team currently in the bottom lane. Does Dahaka have his Brush Stalker to go up there? I'm not sure. We do also get a glimpse of the real Nova. I'm just gonna keep attacking this clone. So, do I just, I just keep getting bonuses, huh? I just keep stacking this up and getting rewards, huh? Several members of the enemy team still holding down the bottom lane. I think I can take out this building for free because Nova's dead. Uh, yeah, okay. Now let me back up. No one knows I'm here, we're fine. Okay, Thrall might know we're here. We're not as fine! We're not as fine! We're not as fine! Holy shit! Holy shit! Get out of the root! Dingo! I just got a tray. Oh, almost, dude. It was actually so close, dude. Did I turn off my trait or was it on there? That was just panic. I'm sorry. But we actually almost won. It was closer than I thought it was gonna be, but we almost won. Valera rooted by Malfurion down in the bottom lane. Dahaka waiting for his adaptation to bring that health back, and he gets it. They secure a kill onto the enemy team's hogger down there. 
They're all still continuing to hold the top. We've just kind of been dancing back and forth between the objectives here, which is why I wanted to secure middle because now we have catapult pressure here. They don't have a sippy cup here. They can't hold this any longer. Really taking parts of the map away from them is, is really, really valuable. In our variant video, it felt like we were fighting over this objective for 20 minutes. And I think that's one thing we could have done better is just siege stuff down. So I'm trying to do it now. Let the killing begin. Killing enemies increases our attack speed on top of all of these other attack speed increases that we're getting from our health getting low. So it really allows us to unload on an enemy in the right condition. I'm standing by the objective. Hanzo's getting top, so we are good. Let me rotate back down. Actually, uh, Taranda might be getting bottom. And if they do, oh shit, I should have just rotated down. Should have just gone to help. Honestly, if we saw Valera rotating, we should have just bailed on it right then. Uh, Dehaka is in pursuit of the enemy team. However, it doesn't connect with anything. I can't remove those roots because we're silenced, but I can stand on this objective and get it for our friendly team. Uh, I do want that region glow. Middle is open, but Valera not in position to grab it at the moment. Thrall reinforcing middle. Let's send some axes over to him. We also see Hogger coming in on the flank. I'm just going to try to safely deal damage, get myself out of that route, back up here as best I can. We have another spin if we need it. Good damage on the Butcher. We ripped right through him. Holy shit. Now looking at Thrall to try to do the same thing. Tazdingo going out because I need to reposition. There it is. Holy shit. Quick heal. I can sippy cup as well and we can get right back in. I'm looking at Thrall. We hit him with the axe. We have the bonus damage. Although it's Hogger looking at me. What are we doing, Dahaka? What are we doing? I'm putting my faith in you. I just need to know what's up. Here we go. He's going in with a lot of auto attacks as well, but does miss the tongue this time. That's okay. You can't hit them all. Uh, Nova moving in on me. We managed to secure the kill. I'm going to enter the brush and try to heal. That didn't quite work out. That is not real Nova. Uh, so I don't know where the real Nova is. She's on the objective right now. She's on the objective. So I can heal here. Okay. Dehaka trying to hold to the best of his ability. I just need to make sure we don't lose this building at the same time. Trust in Dehaka. He's been doing totally fine this whole game. Wait, wait, what happened? Oh no. Oh no. All right, we have 310 stacks right now. Let me go ahead and start fallen back. I'm going to channel to full health right here because I don't know what this enemy team is capable of at the moment. Uh, that being said, I can rip this Dragon Knight apart, and they noticed. Okay, good. They removed me. Good. They're playing this game right. Looks like Hanzo is going to be able to get out of harm's way. The Dragon relocating down to the bottom lane. Let's try to follow our team down there. We're going to pick up Amani Resilience, which is just going to make it so our auto attacks while we are in that dingo state are also going to be restoring health to our character as well. Uh, oh, good. I'm glad someone got that kill. I was going to be very upset. So our attack speeds should be pretty nutty at the moment, especially considering how much health we've lost as well. We also see two members of the enemy team are currently dead, and bottom is looking pretty open here. The Butcher is here, and I mean, that's a little concerning, especially when uh, we get tower aggro on us. That was kind of unfortunate. I didn't think he would be able to hold this down at all versus me and Hanzo, but hey, what, that's okay. He can hold on to it for moments longer. He obviously sees me here. If he wanted to engage with his stun, we could eat some of it. Taz Dingo right now. And then we just auto attack him. Force him out of here and just auto attack him. Same thing with Hogger, just auto attack him. We rip him to shreds. Now we move in and do the same thing to the building. We don't need the objective to get siege. We could siege stuff down on our own and we have a long time to do it too. Actually, I wanna take this camp more than anything else. Trying to healing us back up, helping keeping our health in a manageable spot. That's very good. That will be a big help for pushing the bottom lane. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, couldn't dingo there, but we managed to delete Malfurion in an instant. If our team just kept moving up with this push, um, we would get this. We kind of split it up and started doing everything else on the map. After level 20, splitting is nowhere near as desirable. Nowhere near as desirable. Uh, we had, oh, caps. Big push, bye. 
Try to help it out if you can. Uh, let's see. Valera is up in the top lane, so I guess best case scenario, she grabs the objective right away. Uh, let me get some pings on that. And I can hit... Oh, I'm still dead for 25 seconds. I was expecting to run down the middle lane and get the objective. We're a long way away from that. Thrall is emerging from the base, clearing out the camps that we have been sending towards him. Good stun by Dahaka and a great follow-up by Taronda there as well. The friendly team does get a fast cap of the dragon this time. We see Hanzo in the driver's seat, taking it straight to the middle lane. I'm just going to say this to say I did. The middle lane is great for your first Dragon Knight. You want to kill this building. After that, most of your attention should be in the bottom lane. Now, that being said, the enemy team was also very present in the bottom lane when he got into this thing. So uh, not going straight into them makes a lot of sense. However, he's kind of going straight into them right now, isn't he? <laughs> uh, that's no way. That's the real Nova. The entirety of both teams are right here. This is our biggest fight so far. That's not real Nova, but I get stacks off of it just the same. I'm going to kill this building so our team can feel a little more confident in moving up. Good grab onto the enemy is Hogger. I'm hitting Fury and we got him. Uh, Hogger with his ultimate is going to stun me for a little bit as well. Thrall moving up. He doesn't respect the dingo damage and he should have. He really should have. Hogger trying to make some space. Great stun by Taronda and we clean up that kill with the axe. We're on a triple kill right now. Uh, just hit the building. Just hit the building. Just hit the building. If I can get this out of here, we're going to be fine. I'll even dingo for this. I think it's worth it. Look at that siege. Going in. Going in. Going in. Not going in. Not going in. Not going in. Woo. Okay. Great. Great push. Uh, four dead. We can still core. No reason to leave. No reason to leave. Get in there. I am going to need a heal at some point. But Toronto's attacking now, so she should have a bunch in the bank. And also, if anyone on the friendly team moves into melee range with me, they might kill me. And we need to be very aware of that. Also, the core cannot attack me at all. That's a big no-no. The enemy team is starting to respawn. I'm just going to have to funnel all of our damage into the core. Oh, and we got it. 398 stacks at the end of the game. Not bad at all. I felt like I was doing some pretty good damage. God damn. God damn. Look at the damage. And Dahaka still gets MVP. I, you know what? I think he deserved it. He set up so many kills in that game. Very nicely done. So, obviously, I'm not the most comfortable player in the world on Dingo, but we still managed to do 40% of the team's hero damage. 40%. That's almost half, and there's four other players. That's just how deadly this character can be. Now, I will say I've tried a few different builds leading up to this video. I tried the Axe one uh, for your Q. I tried the the W Axe. He has a lot of Axe abilities. I'm realizing that now that I'm speaking. But this one seems like it's the most reliable. And literally all you have to do is attack enemies. That's all it really comes down to. We went for Recklessness at level 1, Voodoo Shuffle at level 4, Ferocity at 7, Taz Dingo at 10, I of Zul'jin at 13, Let the Killing Begin at 16, and Amani Resilience at 20. Damn. That's going to do it for today's video, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. Up next... <laughs> We're taking a look at Gaul. <laughs> See you guys again next time.